This screencast is one in a series on reactor calculations, and the title is The Stirred Batch Reactor. The content of this screencast is the stirred batch reactor, some properties, the mass balance equation, the concept of reactor time, reactor calculation methodology, one example and including analytical solution, the definition of conversion, and finally some remarks. The stirred batch reactor is very common in industry. One application is synthesis of pharmaceuticals, where traceability is of utmost importance. Another application is the production of pulp, when wooden chips are boiled together with chemicals in a big batch in order to liberate the fibers that are used to make paper. A third example is when a CSTR has stopped, for example when the pumps that provide the feed to the reactor have stopped. A batch reactor is closed with respect to matter and or with respect to energy. And the most important characteristic of the batch reactor is that it is never at steady state as long as a chemical reaction takes place within the reactor. Just as a CSTR, it is perfectly mixed. That means there are no gradients with respect to concentration or temperature within the reactor. The mass balance equation for the batch reactor builds on the general mass balance equation. Input plus production equals the output plus the accumulation. However, since we do not have any input nor any output, we get F prod equals dN dt. That means that the molar rate of production from the chemical reaction balances the change in molar amounts within the reactor. If we express this equation in process quantities, we get on the left side R times V equals, and to the right side, we have split the molar rate of change into two parts. The first part is V dC dt, and the second part is C dV dt. If the volume is constant, the last term, C dV dt, equals zero. And we then see that we can eliminate V both from the left side and from the right side to get the final equation R equals dC dt. The reaction time is different from the resonance time of a CSTR, since the reaction starts at a certain time when T equals zero. And at T equals zero, the concentration is the initial concentration. We we'll call that C zero. The initial conditions for the batch reactors are at time equals zero, the concentration is the initial concentration. And after a certain reaction time, we have at any T greater than zero, the concentration equals C. Reactor calculations for the batch reactor involves solving the differential equation R equals to C dt. Now the general integral providing the solution is, on the left side, we integrate between the initial concentration and the final concentration, and to the right side, we integrate between time equals zero and any other time. There are four steps involved in reactor calculations. The first step is to determine the flow and mixing conditions in terms of an ideal reactor model and define the mass balances. In this case, the ideal reactor model is the batch reactor. The second step is to define all the kinetic equations and the kinetic coefficients relevant for the system. The third step involves combining the mass balance equation with the kinetic equation to form the design equation. And the fourth step is to separate the variables and perform the calculation analytically or numerically. Let's turn to an example. Calculate the concentrations of A and B after four minutes of reaction time for a batch reactor with the reaction A yields B and the rate equation is K times CA. The system properties are the initial concentration of A equals 2 moles per cubic meter, the initial concentration of B equals 0.2 moles per cubic meter, and the kinetic rate equation for this first order reaction is 0.5 per minute. The first step is to clearly define the flow and mixing conditions. So we have a batch reactor, and the design equations that we need to solve are, in order to calculate CA, we need to solve the design equation for A, and to calculate CB, we need to solve both the design equation for A and the design equation for B, since CA is included in the kinetic equation that is used to calculate the formation of B. The mass balance equation become Ra equals dCA dt, while the mass balance equation for B is Rb equals dCB dt. The second step is to define the kinetic equations. This reaction is first ordered with respect to CA. That means that the re 
That means that the rate equation for the reaction is K times CA. The rate equation for the component A equals negative K times CA. While the reaction rate for B, which is produced, equals K times CA. The third step is to combine the mass balance equation with the kinetic equation to form the two design equations. The first one is negative KCA equals dCA dt, while the design equation for B is K times CB equals dCB dt. We can now make the calculations, and we have two strategies. Either we make a sequential equation where we first solve for CA and then for CB, or we make it simultaneously for CA and CB at the same time. Here we will apply the sequential calculation. And the sequential strategy works for A since the kinetic expression for the formation of A only includes CA. On the first line, we have the design equation turned the opposite way as on the previous pages. In the second line, the variables have been separated and the various boundaries have been included. The third line, we have the primitive functions with the various boundaries. And on the fourth line, we have inserted various boundaries on the left and the right side. And on the fifth line, we have the final expression CA equals initial concentration of A times E to the minus K times T. With numerical values, CA equals 2 times E to negative 0.5 times 4, and that is 0.278. We can now calculate CB. The first line, we have the design equation. On the second line, we have inserted the full expression for CA into the right-hand side of the equation. On the third line, the variables have been separated and the boundaries have been included. On the fourth line, we have the primitive function and the boundaries. On the next line, this expression has been evaluated. And on the last line, we have the final expression. CB equals the initial concentration of B plus the initial concentration of A times 1 minus E to negative KT. With numerical values, CB is 1.929, which means that after 4 minutes of reaction time, the concentrations are CA equals 0 0.271 and CB equals 1.929. If we add these concentrations, we get 2.2, which is logical since that is also the sum of the initial concentrations and there was no change in total number of moles in the reaction. When we define conversion, we must define that in terms of molar amounts in the reactor. So the conversion is the fraction between the change in molar amounts in the reactor N0 minus N divided by N0 and in process properties that is V times C0 minus V times C divided by V times C0. If we eliminate the volume, we get X equals 1 minus the concentration divided by the initial concentration, C0. For a reactant A that's converted according to the reaction, R equals K times C, X equals 1 minus E to minus negative KT. And from that expression, we can see that when t approaches infinity, the conversion is 1. Finally, some remarks. We have a design equation for a batch reactor and a first order reaction as dCA dt equals negative K times CA. And the general solution is CA equals initial concentration of C times E to negative KT. What we can see is that from this expression, we can calculate a number of quantities. For example, we can calculate K. Another possibility is to calculate the time needed to reach a certain concentration. And finally, one can use the equation to back calculate the initial concentration. The content of the screencast was the stirred batch reactor, some properties and the mass balance equation, the concept of reaction time, reactor calculations, definition of conversion, and finally, some remarks.